I dream of the first times, the longest memory. I speak of the first times, the oldest father. I sing of the first times and the dawn of darkness, in Nod, where the light of paradise lit up the night sky and the tears of our parents wet the ground. Each of us, in our way, set about to live and take our sustenance from the land. And I, firstborn Cain, I, with sharp things, planted the dark seeds and wet them in the earth, tended them, watched them grow. And Abel, second-born Abel, tended the animals, aided their bloody births, fed them, watched them grow. I loved him, my brother. He was the brightest, the sweetest, the strongest. He was the first part of all my joy. Then one day our father said to us, Cain, Abel, to him above you must make a sacrifice, a gift of the first part of all that you have. And I, firstborn Cain, I gathered the tender shoots, the brightest fruits, the sweetest grass. And Abel, second-born Abel, slaughtered the youngest, the strongest, the sweetest of his animals. On the altar of our father, we laid our sacrifices and lit fire unto them and watched the smoke carry them up to the one above. The sacrifice of Abel, second-born, smelled sweet to the one above, and Abel was blessed. And I, firstborn Cain, I was struck from beyond by a harsh word and a curse, for my sacrifice was unworthy. I looked at Abel's sacrifice, still smoking, the flesh, the blood. I cried, I held my eyes, I prayed in night and day. And when father said, the time for sacrifice has come again, and Abel led his youngest, his sweetest, his most beloved, to the sacrificial fire. I did not bring my youngest, my sweetest, for I knew the one above would not want them. And my brother, beloved Abel, said to me, Cain, you did not bring a sacrifice, a gift of the first part of your joy to burn on the altar of the one above. I cried tears of love, as I, with sharp things, sacrificed that which was the first part of my joy, my brother. And the blood of Abel covered the altar, and smelled sweet as it burned. But my father said, Cursed are you Cain, who killed your brother. As I was cast out, so shall you be. And he exiled me to wander in darkness, the land of Nod. I flew into the darkness, I saw no source of light, and I was afraid, and alone. I was alone in the darkness, and I grew hungry. I was alone in the darkness, and I grew cold. I was alone in the darkness, and I cried. Then there came to me a sweet voice, a honey voice, words of succor, words of surcease. A woman, dark and lovely, with eyes that pierced the darkness, came to me. I know your story, Cain of Nod, she said, smiling. You are hungry. Come, I have food. You are cold. Come, I have clothes. You are sad. Come, I have comfort. Who would comfort one so cursed as I? Who would clothe me? Who would feed me? I am your father's first wife, who disagreed with the one above and gained freedom in the darkness. I am Lilith. Once I was cold, and there was no warmth for me. Once I was hungry, and there was no food for me. Once I was sad, and there was no comfort for me. She took me in. She fed me. She clothed me. In her arms I found comfort. I cried 
until blood trickled from my eyes, and she kissed them away. And I dwelt for a time in the house of Lilith, and asked her, Out of darkness, how did you build this place? How did you make clothes? How did you grow food? And Lilith smiled and said, Unlike you, I am awake. I see the threads that spin all around you. I make that which I need out of power. Awaken me then, Lilith, I said. I have need for this power. Then I can make my own clothes, make my own food, make my own house. Worry creased Lilith's brow. I do not know what the awakening will do for you, for you are truly cursed by your father. You could die. You could be forever changed. Cain said, Even so, a life without power will not be worth living. I would die without your gifts. I will not live as your thrall. Lilith loved me, and I knew this. Lilith would do what I asked, though she did not wish it. And so Lilith, bright-eyed Lilith, awakened me. She cut herself with a knife, bled for me into a bowl. I drank deep. It was sweet. And then I fell into the abyss. I fell forever, falling into the deepest darkness. And from the darkness came a bright shining light, fire in the night, and the Archangel Michael revealed himself to me. I was unafraid. I asked his business. Michael, General of Heaven, wielder of the Holy Flame, said unto me, Son of Adam, son of Eve, thy crime is great, and yet the mercy of my father is also great. Will you not repent the evil that you have done, and let his mercy wash you clean? I said to Michael, Not by the one above's grace, but mine own will I live in pride. Michael cursed me, saying, Then for as long as you walk this earth, you and your children will fear my living flame, and it will bite deep and savour your flesh. And on the morning, Raphael came, on lambent wings, light over the horizon, the driver of the sun, ward of the east. Raphael spoke, saying, Cain, son of Adam, son of Eve, your brother Abel forgives you your sin. Will you not repent? and accept the mercy of the Almighty. And I said to Raphael, Not by Abel's forgiveness, but mine own, will I be forgiven. Raphael cursed me, saying, Then for as long as you walk this earth, you and your children will fear the dawn, and the sun's rays will seek to burn you like fire, wherever you hide always. Hide now, for the sun rises, to take its wrath on you. But I found a secret place in the earth, and hid from the burning light of the sun. Deep in the earth I slept until the light of the world was hidden behind the mountain of night. When I awoke from my day of sleep, I heard the sound of gentle rushing wings, and I saw the black wings of Uriel draped around me. Uriel, Reaper, Angel of Death, Dark Uriel, who dwells in darkness. Uriel spoke to me quietly, saying, Son of Adam, Son of Eve, God Almighty has forgiven you your sin. Will you accept his mercy, and let me take you to your reward, no longer cursed? And I said to dark-winged Uriel, Not by God's mercy, but my own, will I live. I am what I am. I did what I did. And that will never change. And then, through dread Uriel, God Almighty cursed me, saying, Then for as long as you walk this earth, you and your children will cling 
to darkness. You will drink only blood. You will eat only ashes. You will be always as you were at death, never dying, living on. You will walk forever in darkness. All you touch will crumble into nothing until the last days. I gave a cry of anguish at this terrible curse and tore at my flesh. I wept blood. I caught the tears in a cup and drank them. When I looked up from my drink of sorrow, the Archangel Gabriel, gentle Gabriel, Gabriel, Lord of mercy, appeared to me. The Archangel Gabriel said unto me, Son of Adam, Son of Eve, Behold, the mercy of the Father is greater than you can ever know, for even now there is a path opened, a road of mercy, and you shall call this road Golconda, and tell your children of it, for by that road may they come once again to dwell in the light. And with that the darkness was lifted like a veil, and the only light was Lilith's bright eyes. Looking around me, I knew that I had awakened. When my energies first surged through me, I discovered how to move like lightning, how to borrow the strength of the earth, how to be a stone. These were like breathing once was to me. Lilith then showed me how she hides herself from hunters, how she commands obedience, and how she demands respect. Then, awakening myself further, I found the way to alter forms, the way to have dominion over animals, the way to make eyes see past sight. Then Lilith commanded that I stop, saying that I had overreached my bounds, that I had gone too far, that I threatened my very essence. She used her powers and commanded me to stop. Because of her power, I heeded her, but deep within me a seed was planted, a seed of rebellion. And when she turned her face from me, I opened myself up once more to the night, and saw the infinite possibilities in the stars, and knew that a path of power, a path of blood, was mine for the taking. And so I awakened in me this final path from which all other paths would grow. With this new power, I broke the bonds that the Lady of Night put on me. I left the damned queen that evening, cloaking myself in shadows. I fled the lands of Nod, and came, at last, to a place where not even her demons could find me. Let me tell the tale of Zilla, first loved of Cain. First wife of Cain, the sweetest blood, the softest skin, the clearest eyes. Alone of Cain's newest childer did Cain desire her, and she was not mindful of his desire, turning away from him, not gifts, not sacrifices, not perfumes, not doves, not beautiful dancers, not singers, not oxen, not sculpture, not beautiful clothes. Nothing would turn Zilla's heart from stone to sweet fruit. So Cain pulled at his beard, and tore at his hair, and took to roaming the wilderness at night, thinking of her, burning for her. And one night Cain came upon an old crone singing to the moon. Cain said to the crone, Why do you sing so? And the crone replied, Because I yearn for what I cannot have. Cain said to the crone, I yearn also. What can one do? The crone smiled and said, Drink of my blood this night, Cain, father of kindred and return tomorrow night. Then will I tell you the wisdom of the moon. Cain drank at the crone's bare neck and departed. The next night Cain found the crone 
sleeping on a rock. Wake up, crone, Cain said. I have returned. The crone opened one eye and said, I dream of the solution for you this night. Drink once more of me, and then return tomorrow night. Bring a bowl of clay, bring a sharp knife. I will have your answer then. Once again Cain took blood from the crone, who immediately fell back into a deep slumber. When Cain returned the next night, the crone looked up at him and smiled. Greetings, Lord of the Beast, the crone said. I have the wisdom you seek. Take some of my blood into the bowl you have, and mix in these berries and these herbs, and drink deep of the elixir. You will be irresistible. You will be potent. You will be masterful. You will be ardent. You will be glowing. The heart of Zilla will melt like the snows in spring. And so Cain drank from the crone's elixir, because he was so in love with Zilla, and he so desired her love in return. And the crone laughed. The crone laughed aloud. She had tricked him. She had trapped him. Cain was angry beyond compare. Cain reached out with his powers to rend this crone apart with his strength. The crone cackled and said, Do not, and Cain could do nothing against her. The crone chuckled and said, Love me, and Cain could do nothing but stare into her ancient eyes, desire her leathery skin. The crone laughed and said, Make me immortal, and Cain embraced her. She cackled again, laughed with the pure ecstasy of the embrace, for it did not pain her. I have made you powerful, Cain of Enoch, Cain of Nod, but you will forever be bound to me. I have made you master of all, but you will never forget me. Your blood, potent as it is now, will bond those who drink it, as you did, once a night, for three nights. You will be the master, they will be your thrall, as you are mine. For though Zilla will love you as you wanted, you will love me forever. Go now and claim your lovely bride. I will wait for you in the darkest places, while I brew up more potions for your health. And so, heavy-hearted, Cain returned to Enoch, and each night, for three nights, Zilla drank from her sire, though she did not know it, and on the third night, Cain announced he would marry Zilla, his sweetest child, and she agreed. For a year and a day, Cain labored in service to a crone, who with blood wisdom bound him as surely as any prisoner. She would visit him at night, force him to give up his blood for her secret elixirs and potent formulas. She would take his childers childer and they would never be heard from again. But Cain was wise. He did not drink from her ever again, and she did not ask him to, thinking that he was ever in her thrall. One night Cain went to the crone in the forest, and told her of terrible dreams that he had during his sleep. I fear for my life, crone. I fear for the prophecy of Oriel and my children's lust for my blood. Tell me secret knowledge, that I might be powerful against my own. And the crone went to a tree made of gopher wood, and broke off a limb. She took a sharp knife, and sharpened the limb. Take this piece of living wood, sharp, strong. Pierce the heart of your wayward child. It will render him still, and yours to command. Instead of feasting on your heart's blood, he will feel the weight of your justice. Cain said, Thank you, mother. And with that, moving in quick movements, Cain took the stake of gopher wood, 
seized it, and drove it deep within the crone's heart. Because Cain, wise Cain, had not fed upon her for a year and a day, and because he forced his will through his hands, he broke the bond she held on him and turned his fortune. She laughed again, as blood welled up and poured out of her mouth. Her eyes poured out hate. Cain kissed her once, kissed her with cold, withered lips, and left her there to Raphael's gentle smile, the sun that rises. In the beginning, there was only Cain. Cain, who sacrificed his brother out of love. Cain, who was cast out. Cain, who was cursed forever with immortality. Cain, who was cursed with the lust for blood. It is Cain from whom we all come. Our sires, sire. For the passing of an age, he lived in the land of Nod, in loneliness and suffering. For an eon, he remained alone, but the passing of memory drowned his sorrow, and so he returned to the world of mortals, to the world his brother, Seth, third-born of Eve, and Seth's children had created. He returned and was made welcome, for none would turn against him due to the mark that was laid upon him. The people saw his power and worshipped him. He grew powerful, and his power was strong. His ways of awe and command were great, and the children of Seth made him king of their great city, the first city. But Cain grew lonely in his power. Deep within him, the seeds of loneliness blossomed and grew a dark flower. He saw within his blood the potence of fertility. By calling up demons and listening to whispered wisdom, he learned the way to make a child for his own. He came to know its power, and, in doing so, decided to embrace one of those near him. And lo, Uriel, dread Uriel, revealed himself to Cain that very night and said to him, Cain, though powerful you are, and marked of God, know you this, that any child you make will bear your curse, that any of your progeny will forever walk in the land of Nod, and fear flame and sun, drinking blood only, and eating ashes only, and since they will carry their father's jealous seed, they will forever plot and fight amongst themselves. Doom not those of Adam's grandchildren who seek to walk in righteousness, Cain. Stay your dread embrace. Still, Cain knew what he must do, and a young man named Enosh, who was the most beloved of Seth's kin, begged to be made son to the Dark Father, and Cain mindful though he was of Uriel's words, seized Enosh and wrapped him in the dark embrace. And so it came to pass that Cain beget Enoch, and, so doing, named the first city Enoch. And, so doing, did Enoch beg for a brother, a sister, and Cain, indulgent father, gave these to him and their names were Zillah, whose blood was most favoured of Cain, and Irad, whose strength served Cain's arm. And these kindred of Cain learned the ways of making progeny of their own, and they embraced more of Seth's kin, unthinking. And then wise Cain said, An end to this crime, there shall be no more. And as Cain's word was the law, his brood obeyed him. The city stood for many ages, and became the centre of a mighty empire. Cain grew close to those not like him. The children of Seth knew him, and he in turn knew them. 
But the world grew dark with sin. Cain's children wandered here and there, indulging their dark ways. Cain felt anger when his children fought. He discovered deceit when he saw them make word war. He knew sadness when he saw them abuse the children of Seth. Cain read the signs in the darkening sky, but said nothing. Then came the great deluge, a great flood that washed over the world. The city was destroyed, the children of Seth with it. Again, Cain fell into great sorrow and went into solitude, and he left us, his progeny, to our own ends. We found him, after much searching, deep in the earth, and he bade us go, saying that the flood was a punishment for his having returned to the world of life and subverting the true law. He asked us to go so that he might sleep. So we returned alone to find the children of Noah and announced that we were the new rulers. Each created a brood in order to claim the glory of Cain, yet we did not have his wisdom or restraint. A great war was waged, the elders against their children, just as Uriel had said, and the children slew their parents. They rose up using fire and wood, swords and claws, to destroy those who had created them. The rebels then built a new city out of the fallen empire. They collected the thirteen clans that had been scattered by the Great War and brought them all together. They brought in the Kingship Clan, the Clan of the Beast, the Moon Clan, the Clan of the Hidden, the Wanderer Clan, the Clan of the Rose, the Night Clan, the Clan of Shapers, the Snake Clan, the Clan of Death, the Healer's Clan, the Clan of the Hunt, and the Learned Clan. They made a beautiful city, and the people worshipped them as gods. They created new progeny of their own, the fourth generation of Cainites. But they feared the Jihad, the prophecy of Uriel, and it was forbidden for those children to create others of their kind. This power their elders kept for themselves. When a child was created, it was hunted down and killed, and its sire with it. Although Cain was away from us, we did feel his careful eye watching us, and we knew that he marked our movements and our ways. He cursed Malkov when that one defamed his image and doomed him to insanity forever. When Nosferatu was found indulging his taste in foul ways with his own children, Cain laid his hands on Nosferatu and told him that he would forever wear his evil and twisted his visage. He cursed us all for killing the first part of his children, the second generation, as we had hunted them down one by one. Zilla the Beautiful, Irad the Strong, and Enoch First Ruler. And we mourned them all, as we were all of a kind, and all of the families of Cain's children. Though the city was as great as Cain's, Eventually, it grew old. As do all living things, it slowly began to die. The gods at first did not see the truth, and when they last looked about them, it was too late. For as Uriel had said, the seed of evil planted blossomed as a blood-red rose, and Troily, the child of his child's child, rose up and slew his father, Bruha, and ate of his flesh. Then war racked the city, and nothing 
could ever be as it was. The thirteen saw their city destroyed and their power extinguished, and they were forced to flee their progeny along with them. But many were killed in the flight, for they had grown weak. With their authority gone, all were free to create their own broods, and soon there were many new kindred who ruled across the face of the earth. But this could not last. Over time, there came to be too many of the kindred, and then there was war once again. The elders were already deep in hiding, for they had learned caution, but their children had founded their own cities and broods, and it is they who were killed in the great wave of war. There was war so total that there are none of that generation to speak of themselves any longer. Waves of mortal flesh were sent across continents in order to crush and burn the cities of the kindred. Mortals thought they were fighting their own wars, but it is for us that they spilt their blood. Once this war was over, all of the kindred hid from one another and from the humans that surrounded them. In hiding we remain today, for the jihad continues still. And none will say when Cain will arise again from his sleep in the earth and call for the city. Gehenna, the last city, the city of judgment. The jihad continues still. These are the words that Cain said regarding our progeny, as he ruled in Enoch as king. Hear the words of Cain, lawgiver. Thou shalt not make progeny against my will, and if you are given leave, then choose of those children of Adam well. Think of them as your future brother or sister. Look to the everlasting night ahead, and know Oriel's prophecy, that forever shall child rise up to slay sire. Know thou that, as in all things, the father overcomes the child, the mother, her daughter. Only through me will you come to truth. Only through me will you come to peace. Only through me will you come awake to your power. Know thou that the right of life or death, as it was in my times, will ever be the sire's over the child's, for it has been set in heaven as well as in this world, the way of things. My father, Adam, over me, I, over you, you, my children, over all progeny you get. Thou shalt not suffer your child to live. If it is found that he has killed one of your brothers and has drunk his heart's blood, this is the serpent's way, and I will not abide it. Thou shalt not embrace those who are unworthy. Thou shalt not use the embrace as punishment. Neither shall you embrace the youngest, who should live long enough before being brought into my family, so that the wisdom of our line will grow. Thou shalt not embrace those who are diseased, insane, or full of ill humours, for they will taint the blood. Never shall there be more kindred of Cain than kindred of Seth in a place. Neither should there be one of Cain for every three of Seth. All children should learn from their sire the law and the traditions, the rites and the customs, as I have given them to you. Thou shalt not embrace the moon beasts, for these should be outcast and called abomination. Neither should you taste of their blood, for they are forbidden. They bring death to our door. Embrace not the blood of the enlightened. Rather listen to their words. Watch their actions. 
and move swiftly against them, should they strike. A useful sword, but often too sharp. Taste not the blood of the wild ones, for in it is madness. Neither should you embrace them, for you will not survive it. Embrace not love, for love in my embrace will grow cold, wither, and die. These are the words that Cain said regarding the children of Seth as he ruled in Enoch as king. Hear the words of Cain, lawgiver. We are given dominion over the line of Seth, third son of Adam, as he is our youngest brother. We will watch over his children as if they were our own. We will show them the right way, and in return they will serve us all of their days. They will serve us while the sun rides the sky and watch over our houses with quenching water against Michael's fire. They will feed us and provide us with clothes. They will dance for us and provide us with song. They will lay with us and provide us with comfort. They will advise us and we will listen to their advice. They will worship us and we must not allow their worship. Thou shall not become as a god to the children of Seth, for the one above, growing jealous in his sky, will strike down the line of Cain forever. Remember gentle-faced Ashtareth. Remember golden-fat Baal. Remember strong Tammuz. Know thou that the children of Seth will rise up with weapons from the one above, and conquer us, should we be as gods to them. Thou shalt guide the children of Seth as a shepherd guides his flock, and cull them as they are needed. Thou shalt cleanse their blood, and keep all of them free from disease. Find you a place that is yours, and the mortals that dwell there. Let them be your sheepfold, let them be your cup, let them be your holy bread. Mark ye that a mortal who, marked with the power of another Cainite, does a thing, yea verily. He does it as if that child of Cain did it, and that kindred will pay the price of crime or retribution, just as he had done the thing, for in this way there is an accounting to be made, and the children of Seth not be merely swords in the hands of dark strangers. Mark well the threefold drinking, the bond of blood, and let those of Seth's children with great skill come to serve the children of Cain, as it is we are the first part of wisdom and should be served. As well, in blood bonds, know that there is no greater bond than Cain has with his children, and through me all chains are broken, all shackles are shattered. Mark well the children of the one above, the cherubs, the seraphim, the archangels, for their touch will burn you as does the flame of Michael. Mark well the children of the one below, the serpent's kin, for their touch will burn you as well, and their tongues will delude and deceive you. In need you may feed the beasts of the field of your blood, and husband them. They will grow strong and loyal, but beware of the beast within the beast within and feed not a hunger that may not abate. Those you choose to bless with the potence of Cain may come to live within your house to protect you. Let no one embrace these guardians. Let them be given blood at the appropriate time. Let their strength be your strength, strength that does not abate with the sun. Let their eyes be your eyes eyes that can see in the day. Let their ears be your ears, ears that can hear while you slumber. Let those who serve be named the greatest of the children of Seth and most privileged. Let them enjoy the fine cloth of the kindred. Let them enjoy the gentle music of the kindred. Let them know the sweetness of our wine. Let us protect them from
from those who would hinder and hurt us, and let us all rise up in outrage, should one of those who serve be slain by another kindred. For no kindred has the right to kill another's servant without provocation. The moon beasts, the ones who change, they are the oldest of all. Before my father they roamed the lands. Tarry not in the path of them, avoid them. They are set upon us like wolves in the sheepfold. For we are of one kind, and they another. Beware their sacred ground, walk softly through their wilderness. Their bite is as our bite, their claws are as our claws. Tarry not in the path of them, they are of one kind, and we another. Of the mad ones, the wild ones, I say first, drink not of their blood, but watch them, for they are beautiful in their wildness. They are enchanting in their mystery. They are deadly in their war skills. Alone among the creatures of the night, they kept me company in the earth and brought me water when I was thirsty and could still breathe. Like me, they were cast out. Like my children, they are homeless. Like my children's children, they wander. Like my mother and father, they knew too much. But they keep their own counsel, and of them I say, mark me well. Keep silent, say nothing, watch and learn. The mother of power, Dark Lilith, is of the greatest of them. But there are others, and more yet to come. Drink not of their blood, for they will ensnare you. Keep wary of them, they are crafty. They know Adam's knowledge and Eve's wisdom. They are the bringers of fire, the tillers of soil, the husbanders of animals, the bringers of writing. They are the sun children, the rising stars. They will seek to involve you in their journey. Resist, resist. Their path disregards hunger, blood, and body. Trust not the ones with bright eyes towards the dawn. Remember always, it is the dawning that brings your death. Mark you well, there is a place beyond spirit, beyond life, which is darkness, shadow, and there shadows dwell. An island, a fortress. A land of the dead. I have travelled there through a pathway of doom, and I have witnessed the dread king of the Stygian city as he sat at court. I have seen the faceless, hooded ones transversing river Styx. They swarm about us like flies on a putrefying corpse, and like us, they feed on fear, ecstasy, and anger. Dead they are, but undead, and they are closer to us than we will ever know. The blood of my brother cries out to me as I sleep as the sun crosses the sky. I hear my brother, second-born Abel, screaming. Mark well the spirits of those who have died. Know their strength is not your own. Listen to their words. They carry wisdom. Listen not to their songs. That way is oblivion. Do not seek to bind them, but free them if you can. Such is the commandment of Cain, who himself has been imprisoned and freed. Thou shalt not slay thy sire and drink his heart's blood. Thou shalt hold the eldest among you as lord. Even as I am your father, the eldest is closest to me. Thou shalt honour each other's house. Thou shalt honour each other's domain. Thou shalt not reveal yourselves as gods to the children of Seth. Honour another's progeny. Honour always your sire. 
Thou shalt teach your progeny the ways of the kindred. Thou shalt not embrace love. Thou shalt not feed of the moon beasts, the wild ones, the diseased, the insane, or the drunkard. Thou shalt protect always those who serve. To your brothers and sisters always give hospitality. To your sires, brothers and sisters, always give the best part of your house. To your progenies, brothers and sisters, give a roof from the sun and the blood of a sheep, no more. Never forget your sire's sire, Cain the Wanderer. Throw off the elder's shackles of the mind, reach into thyself, and see the truth revealed. The truth, as truth is seen, will illuminate your soul and heal your wounds. Know who you are first, and be true to yourself. You are my children all, but I would sooner shatter you like flawed pottery than have your weakness. Be that you are a flawed copy out of my mould. Lo, my children, you will walk the earth, wander far, and carry these words. Move one step before those who see by the moon. Never abide weakness. Keep your children loyal. Walk with your head high. Let the beast rule you. Mark where you hunt, so that your brothers and sisters will know and not intrude. Take all you need, but be mindful that the hunter can become the hunted, and there are those who find us no matter how we flee. Should you become confused, go and eat only of animals or a moon. Sleep in the earth, and drink in sweet water. You will hear my voice in your ears like a distant bird's cry or a lion's roar, and you will know what to do. Let no one say that the house of Gangrel is a dishonourable one. Let no one say that we are not brave. Let no one say we are not fair. You, a child of the beast, a child of darkness, are first among kindred. In the singing shattered midnight, by the choral sands of time, through the bloody gates of heaven, past the centuries in my mind, bring about the change so quickly, bring about the terror's night, bring about the blood of lovers, bring about the smell of fright, I see you watching where I walk, through the moonlit jasmine field. Listen closely as I talk, about the stars and their lovers past. Past fields of poppies burning bright, into towers of blackened bone. Follow me, bastard of Cain, come with me, I have no home. As I drain your life's blood sweetly, as you sigh into my warm hands, as I suck your madness neatly, streaming down like crimson bands. I dance the dance of the fool, and pray you find me mad, for if you lay hands upon the root, you'll know me without illusion, and find me guilty of the truth. You are the children of shadow, you are the sons and daughters of darkness. Seek the darkest place, make it your own. Feed on the wicked, feed on the sinful, feed on the ugly souls. For such is our diet, such is our father's wish, our preordained meal. My childer, look not at your visage to curse me, for I know the beauty that lies within, and no greater beauty will there ever be. In quiet you will know beauty, in beauty you will know truth, in truth you will know love, in love you will know quiet. My children, 
my creations, my beautiful things. Watch and listen, listen and watch. Use your sight to see the truth in beauty. Use your speed to stay still. Use your beauty to know truth. My children, my creations, gentle roses all. I have called for your sculpture. I have called for your pictures. I have called for your song. I have called for your dancing. Beautiful children, beautiful creations. Gold is not as precious, honey not as sweet, milk not as pure. Like the tiger you bite, like the hawk you dive, like the cat you stalk. Beautiful predators, sweet succubi, daring incubi, taste virgin's blood and find bliss. Find your greatest part of joy. Follow your greatest part of joy. And know that I watch you, enthralled, my children, my creations, my beautiful ones. We ruled in Enoch. We ruled in the second city. Dumuzi, Gilgamesh, Zeus, Jupiter. We are every great man, every perfect man. We rule, not by strength, but by right. Be the lawgiver, the tool maker. Carry the sacred me to the people. Keep the covenant. Bind those that rebel. Glory in those who fight and win. Keep strong swords about you always, and sharp eyes at your back. Cower not in fear of the sun, shirk not from fire. Though cursed we may be, we are lords of the earth, and all things fall under our dominion. Know you are made to be unmade. You are the white lamb, the gentle sacrifice. You are the greatest part of the bounty of Cain, and on your shoulders shall be his greatest sin. For alone among the children of Cain I have asked the one above for forgiveness, and I have been visited by the worst of the one below's demons, those snakes which bit me in my sleeping, those foul worms who suck my blood. I learned from them to take the blackness from the blood, the wounds from the flesh, the evil from the soul. And though I may die, you, my children, will live on. Open thy eye and see the world truly, and know that what you do now goes on to heal another generation. And the enemies of Cain were great, and fell to fighting over his trail. Like hounds, the scent would not abate through flood and moon and much travail. The hunter's skill was great as they looked for their father, and they did see ancient discipline used to find the road to Shalkamens. They came at last to that secret place where Cain hid amongst the waters. Showing himself, Cain called them under, gentle sons, Gentle daughters, why do you disturb my slumber? And they tried to embrace their father with steely things and things of wood. But lightning cane, fast-moving cane, would not be stopped by such as them. Under the curling, blasting waters, beyond the pool of Vedsamer, in the grotto of Shalkamens, they did gather, they did gather to embrace their sleeping father's form. Found him sleeping, found him wakeful, battle ready, eyes abright, smiling at his ancient childer, waging war in the waxing light. Now the stars, they one by one, blot their ways into lightning sky. 
Now the fires burn hell and cinder. Now the heat reveals the pyre. Too long the hunters waited further. Too long they did by Ved Samer tarry long enough to see the light of dawn upon their father's face. And in turning, burning mark, they saw the finger of God's own hate, twisting, curling, God's own word it set apart Cain's lonely fate. And as they burned in hell-bright fires, as they saw the melted flesh, as they burned with their own kindred, Cain blessed more funeral pyres, taking in his bloody sacrament. Seek not the blood of thine own elder, Seek not the blood of thy sire's sire, Seek not the blood that made thee kin, For thou wilt feel the funeral pyre, When thou dost pay for thy immortal sin. It is very hard, my children, to prescribe for you the punishment of burning, of exsanguination, of beheading, of torture, of paralysis, of the sudden death. You are my childer, alone among the rest of existence. You are my only companions. Forever will we be locked in the way that fathers are bonded to their sons and sons to their fathers. And yet I will root out the bad seed. I will weed out the worst of you. I will prune my dark tree in the manner that my father Adam taught me. Go not to the clan of the rose for advice, for they will give you no single answer. Watch Gangrel, and when they are uneasy, leave. The first to die in any jihad are Nosferatu. Bless those who fight our natural enemies. Keep safe the water-bearer, the builder, the undertaker. These are not to be prey. Let not the priest, poet, or peasant see you feed. Not one of them will leave it be. Let honour be your shield, your sword, and your cloak. Let Ventru save face and you will go far. To rid yourself of an enemy, outlive him. Vengeance is best when the blood is still hot. Know that in all times there will be Caesar. Pay him his due. Fight the first battle, win the first war. Watch your own childer. On the lips of all is the honey taste of diablerie. One sip of blood I take, two sips I accept, three sips I refuse. Bargain not with the darkness, in time it will take us all. Ride the beast, do not let it ride you. Make not friends among the poets, they will sing too much of you. Be not known, seek shadows. When the cross has a point, find your safety. Take gently from women, take directly from men, take sweetly from children, take haltingly from animals, from kindred, share, from the moon beast, feast. Be as a king, your sacred duty is to protect the weak and fight the mighty. Quiet, hear the ravens cry, the stillness of the wind rising hot on the street, the towers hide the darkness of the day. When La Sombra's dreams come true, on the day when the moon runs as blood, and the sun rises black in the sky, that is the day of the damned, when Cain's children will rise again, and the world will turn cold and unclean things will boil up from the ground, and great storms will roll, lightning will light fires, animals will fester, and their bodies, twisted, will fall. So too our grandsires will rise from the ground, 
They will break their fast on the first part of us. They will consume us whole. On the second day Cain will return and call his children to the meeting place on the site of the first city. He will beckon them, sitting at his basalt throne. And Cain will call aloud the names of those to be destroyed, for their crimes are too great, and all those who have consumed the heart's blood of their sire will be brought before the black throne and made to drink of Cain's blood. And Cain's blood will eat their blood, and the dark mother herself will be brought forth, and there in the valley of Enoch will there be a battle, a duel of dark father and dark mother. The demon queen will bite deep, the damned king will bite deeper. We will not know the thing which will happen, but the sky will tear apart, and the earth below, and the forces of hell will pour up out of the ground. On the third day there will be a silence. The crows will feed on the carrion. Plague will dance among the ruins. The last of the wild ones will leave this place. The last of the moon beasts will fight and fall. And the antediluvians will make for themselves an empire of blood. They will rule with iron talons. They will wretch the hearts of all still alive. And the full sun of the earth's living will come and live in the last city called Gehenna. And there will be a reign of one thousand years. And there will be no love or life or pity. The mighty will be as slaves. The virtuous will be made foul. Every good gift, every perfect gift, will be tainted by the father of darkness, whose power will come from the nether realms. When the snows consume the earth, and the sun gutters like a candle in the wind, then, and only then, will there be born a woman, the last daughter of Eve, and in her there will be decided the fate of all. And you will not know this woman, except by the mark of the moon on her, and she will face treachery, hatred, and pain. But in her is the last hope. And you will know these last times by the time of thin blood, which will mark vampires that cannot beget. You will know them by the clanless, who will come to rule. You will know them by the wild ones, who will hunt us even in the strongest city. You will know them by the awakening of some of the eldest. The crone will awaken and consume all. You will know these times, for a black hand will rise up and choke all those who oppose it, and those who eat heart's blood will flourish, and the kindred will crowd each to his own, and Vitae will be as rare as diamonds. Mark these signs, they are coming. Gehenna will be on earth. Mark the shadow which flies, Mark the dragon which rises, mark the darkness which moves, mark the shadow of the moon, mark the angel that dies, mark the maiden who weeps, mark the children embraced, mark the clanless who run. And there will be a time when Sire will drive out Childer, when Sire will abandon Childer to the sun's mercy, and there will be no mercy for the clanless. Mongrel though they may be, upon their forgotten sires shall be the curse of Oriel. Upon their hateful sires shall be the curse that comes of crossing Cain. Upon their lazy sires shall be the curse of the hunters hunted. Those among the clanless will have no path to follow, no family to name, no generation to hold, no traditions to keep, no customs to give no hospitality to give. Why do you make these orphans? Why do you leave them in the street? They are the dark seed of our undoing. They will bang together with those who hate us. They will follow Bruja's childer. They will make the blood run red. They are going to kill the dead. They are going to eat our kin. They will scream and bash our doors. They will cry aloud for justice, clanless all.
they will wash over our walls. Clanless all, they will know secret ways. Clanless all, they are Lilith's foul get. Clanless all, they are newly awake. Clanless all, no family, no sign, no loyalty, no elder. Beware those who walk without a clan, for they will be our undoing. Pity them, adopt the orphans where you can, but watch them. In them is the bad seed of their sire. And they asked Cain, the old father, Why do you command us not to embrace those we love? And Cain said to them, Love is the sweet rain which falls down from the one above. Love is the gift of life. Remember ye not Oriol's curse, that we are to eat only ashes, drink only blood. Blood is not sweet rain. Our drink takes life. And then Cain's eyes got the look of visions, and he quieted. Then he spoke. But if ever one of us is gifted with the love of a mortal, without command, without awe, without compulsion, a love given freely, then that love will be as the gentle rain to even the lowliest of us. And though we shall not embrace it, it will feed us as if we supped at our father's table. It will satisfy our deepest thirst. But hearken ye, my children. The children of Seth will always hate us again and again, for we are their predators, we are their masters, and they know this deep in their soul. Look not for love among them. They will not give it. Be not a fool. What of the moon beast who hunt us, father? There will come a time in the last days when the moon beasts will grow uneasy and they will be dying out. Like a sick wolf who must leave the pack, they will fight rather than die sick, and so they will find us and they will kill us. Mark ye well the clan of the beast, for they will hold the key. They will make the way of protection. They will make the way of trickery. They will make the way of peace. There will come a time when the curse of the one above will not be tolerated further, when the lineage of Cain will end, when the blood of Cain will be weak, and there will be no embracing for these children, for their blood will run like water, and the potence in it will wither. Then you will know, in this time, that Gehenna will soon be upon you. There will come a time when the heads of three princes will watch the burning of the dawn on a pillar of white. There will come a time when an ancient hunger will awaken deep in the northern woods and consume all her children. There will come a time when an elder darkness will stir deep below a city which has forgotten and will surprise the elder, its children. Of these signs you will know, the Dark Father, bastard of Cain, will awaken and drink deep of blood sacrifice to it. Of these signs you will know that the time has come to lay claim to your clan's safety to fight the Dark Father. On these signs you must know that Gehenna waits, even at the door, as an actor waits in the wings. It is coming. It is near. Shine black, the sun. Shine blood, the moon. Gehenna is coming soon. <laughs>